Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. What is it? It's 11.34. I'm in my kitchen. Well, my dining room, but there we go. How are you, year two business? Uh, my name is Neil Slotnick. I will be teaching you um, half of your business studies course for this year. Now, we're going to start things a bit differently um, today. What I've noticed on my Google Classroom is that not everybody has logged in. In fact, I reckon I've got about two thirds in. So rather than running a full on Zoom interactive lesson, um, which I think will be a bit unfair on those who haven't logged in through no fault of their own, I'm going to do this via a video and via assessed work on Classroom. I'm going to be seeing you online only Tuesdays, um, 1.30 to 4.30. That's the kind of allotted time. Um, and from next week onwards, I'm going to be back in work as per usual, and we'll do Zoom stuff. I'll find a room, um, and we can be doing, you know, interactivity and all that. But for today, yeah, a bit of a kind of boring video, so to speak. And um, well, it's not boring, obviously, it's business study. But you know, there you go. So a bit about me. My name is Neil Slotnick. Um, I am a senior tutor. I work with a safeguarding team, and obviously, I teach business studies and economics as well. Now. Um, what I'll do is next week, I'm going to place your schema learning into my classroom, all that kind of stuff. What you've already got in my classroom is the PowerPoints that I've used when teaching year one in the past. And there's everything there. So if you've got any gaps in your notes, you can go there and download it as you wish. Um, I've also posted up a series of um, exam guidance videos. All right. So they're broken down by a cha introduction, chains of reasoning, then each different type of question. I'm going to set you a 10 marker today um, due, well, I'll let you know when it's due towards the end of the video. If you're stuck on structures for 10 markers, all you need to do, take a look at the resources that I've posted um, under exam guidance and then take a look under, um, I totally lost my track. Take a look under the videos as well and you'll see a nice short video on 10 markers and a review of some best practice work for 10 markers. Okay, so if you're stuck on structures, go back there. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to um, go back to that. I'm going to give you two videos to watch, one on the economy and one on um, legislation. You may have already done this during lockdown, but what, what we're doing, we're kind of doing a recovery timetable. And for the first three weeks, what we're going to be assuming is, is that lockdown was tough for all of us. And you've probably forgotten what you did during lockdown. So I'm just going to check the time. Lovely. Um, so we're going to start off with the economy and legislation. I'm going to give you one video for the economy and a bit of work to do, one video for legislation and a bit of work to do. Whether you've done this before, whether you've not done this before, I want this done. OK, and I'll talk about deadlines and whatnot um, in a minute. To be honest with you, there's no kind of rules. Um, you know, if, if we were teaching in a class, even though you're year two, I would start off by saying, bring your pen, bring your paper, don't talk over me, blah, blah, blah. Um, when we start doing Zoom lessons, I will set a few ground rules. But for today, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say, bring your pen, because if you haven't got a pen while you're watching this video online, there's something's gone wrong. So we're going to go straight in then, external influences, the economy. And this is the last part of, um, or this, this is kind of one of the final bits towards the end of um, theme two. Just to say that I'm teaching you the back end of theme two and the majority of theme three, um, I'm teaching you paper two. Hopefully you know about those structures. If you don't, watch my introductory video on exam structure. I take you through the kind of structures of the paper, etc. Right, let's not uh, beat around the bush anymore. Let's get to it. What do you need to know? According to the Edexcel specification, you need to know the effect on business of changes in the trade cycle, the business cycle, interest rates, exchange rates going up and down, inflation, taxation, and government spending. You need to also think about uncertainty and the work that I'm going to set you for this link to that. This is a bit of a light touch. You don't need to know massive kind of in-depth things about all of this. If you do economics, the knowledge that you're going to need for this is kind of lower than what you do in economics. I'm going to do this all in one, okay? So the external environment, generally speaking, our firms that we talk about, large, small, medium, must take into account the external environment, the environment outside of them in which they operate in order to make effective decisions. Most businesses are likely to have, are unlikely, sorry, to have much control over this environment. We can't control it. You know, no business could know the coronavirus would come in. Um, you know, even though in January, the media was starting to put things out about it. We couldn't have known the impact it was going to have. I remember saying to students, if Leighton's a business 
I'm saying to students in January, don't worry about coronavirus. We've got nothing to worry about. You know, this is, it, it, it's nothing. And look what happened. So businesses need to be monitoring that environment constantly to react to any changes that will occur. And the most competitive businesses will try and anticipate change rather than react to it. What I mean by that is they'll try and predict what's going to happen in the future and go with that rather than letting a change happen and then react to it. So really, the economy is this whole trade cycle thing. Right? And I'll take you through this in a minute. The, the trade cycle, by definition, is the level of economic activity changing over time and uh, trade cycle. We measure it via GDP. Gross domestic product is the total value of a country's output in a year. Let's take a look at that diagram at the bottom. On the x-axis, you have time. How long is that time? We don't know. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. GDP, gross domestic product, total value of output over a year. What you've got is that diagonal dashed line. That's the trend rate of economic growth. That's what the government of any country wants to see, and they want growth to be slow and steady. They don't want massive levels of growth because then prices will just start going up and things become unaffordable. And obviously, they don't want that line going down because that means that the economy is going to be shrinking. So slow and steady growth, GDP up over a long period of time. The wavy line is what actually happens. Okay? And we've got four stages going from the left. Boom, recession, slump and recovery. Uh, boom, recession, slump, recovery. It's a cycle, it's like, like a bicycle, isn't it? It just goes round and round in circles. And when you get to a boom, it's inevitable that you're going to be in a recession. And on recession, if you look at the left-hand side, recession is two quarters of negative economic growth. So that's two quarters of a year. That's six months free and free. Um, yeah, and recession and leads into slump. We are, of course, in a coronavirus recession. Um, it's, it, it's not very good, is it? And we'll, we'll think about the features of these now. So the business cycle then, what goes on? In a boom, well, basically speaking, you've got people spending loads of cash, all right? Think about the term boom. The economy is booming. It's, it's, it's blowing up, all right? So we're all rich. We've got good jobs. We've got pay rises coming on. Firms are making investments. They're paying off. Firms are making more profit. They can pay their workers more money. So our firms are confident. Profits are high. Prices and costs will also be going up because if we're spending, if we've got loads of money, if we're flush, Firms will know that and they will start to increase their prices and suppliers um, for firms will start to increase their costs as well. Unemployment is low, so things are great. But, you know, this is a cycle. A boom has to go into a recession at some point or else we will constantly be booming until the end of the world, should the world ever end. So the reason for this to me is about inflation. At some point, prices just get so high that consumers say, no, I can't afford this anymore. I'm going to stop spending. I'm going to maybe start saving a little bit. Um, you know, I just, I almost have to protest against raising prices by not spending. And if hundreds of thousands of people stop spending, we then move into recession. That could be because of an external factor. That could be because of the financial crisis in 2008. That could be because of 9-11 in 2001. Or that could be because of coronavirus now. And in that recession, consumer spending will start to drop off. Confidence for consumers and for businesses will lower and profits start to decrease. And then firms will stop investing. They'll, they're running out of money. They've got less profit. Maybe they'll get rid of some of their workers. So we have spare capacity. Um, if you think about it at the moment, capacity, um, meaning kind of the use of space, go into the city of London, go around Liverpool Street. How busy are the offices? They're not. People are working from home. So all the kind of related services in the city, the pubs, the restaurants, the delis, the lunch places, they're not being used. And they might be laying off their workers, getting rid of their workers, which means unemployment starts to go up. Once we've gone beyond the recession stage, we're at the slump or the depression. It's the worst part of recession. So we've got very weak consumer spending, no business investment. Businesses start to shut down. And that's probably what we're seeing at the moment, even though we're still in recession. Unemployment is rising rapidly and prices will have to start dropping because firms need people to spend money in some way. So all that eat out to help out. Uh, I know the firms have started to continue doing that on their own backs now, even though the government support is stopped. And because of these prices dropping in the cycle, that comes to our bottom box. We start to hit a bit of a recovery. Things start to get better. We see the kind of green shoots of growth, so to speak. Consumers begin to increase their spending. Firms feel a little bit more confident. They start to invest again. But it takes time for unemployment 
stop growing. It takes time for employment to start to increase. And then when we get to the recovery stage, we then hit the boom stage. People are flush again. We're smoking cigars. We're drinking champagne. Well, not all of us. The bankers probably are. Prices go up. The economy booms. We then hit the recession, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in terms of those key definitions, these other things that come in to um, the trade cycle, you need to think about um, what some of these words mean. And I just realized, sorry, I did this PowerPoint a couple of years ago. I forgot to update this page. So the figures are going to be wrong. I will flag these up as we go through. You might need to Google these because some of these I don't actually know myself. I should know these, but I don't. So you need to think about interest rates. These are the charge for people and firms to borrow money from the bank and the reward based on top of an amount of saving money within a bank. Currently set at 0.5%. No, they're not. I think they're at about 0.1% at the moment um, because of the lack of confidence due to coronavirus. Rates have come down massively. Why are rates so low at the moment? That means that um, we can borrow cheap money from the bank. If people have got no money, if they're worried about their futures, they can get cheap loans and they can then spend this money which might hopefully boost the economy. But thinking about it at the moment, if you if you've got if you're a rich person and you've got loads of money in savings accounts, you're getting about 0.1% back. All right. So think about these big businesses at the moment, if they want to grow, they might as well take out a cheap bank loan. Will banks loan at these low rates? That's debatable. But yeah, I mean, I think at the moment firms will be borrowing. There's no point in anybody saving at the moment because rates are so low. Inflation we spoke about um, is a rise in general prices over a period of time. The rate of inflation shows the changes in price levels over this time. This is measured by the Consumer Price Index, CPI. And this is a basket of 600 or 700 goods. Google that. Again, I've forgotten that. Bought on average by the population. And these goods will change all the time. So you've got your constants, bread is in there, milk is in there, butter is in there. But say, for example, a few years ago, you might have had, I don't know, people used to buy MP3s or whatever. MP3s have been taken out because no one buys MP3s anymore. Um, and obviously streaming would have been bought in for music because that is the kind of spending patterns that we do today. It says it currently stands at 3.1%. It probably doesn't anymore. You will want to, in your own time, Google what the current rate of inflation is. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be quite low at the moment. But if you think about it, if prices are increasing, the term on this point, interest rates go up. Prices, if price increases are slowing down, interest rates go down. And think about the impact of this on a firm's costs. Firms like low inflation because the resources that they buy in are going to be cheaper. With regards to exchange rates, this is the value of one currency related to another. For example, we could say one pound equals one dollar fifty. OK, so we spend a pound, we get one dollar fifty back. We spend two pounds, we get three dollars back, etc. Et if the exchange rate appreciates, the currency value has gone up. For example, we could say one pound gets us one dollar sixty. Sorry, that should say dollar, not um, one pound sixty. If the exchange rate depreciates, the currency value has gone down appreciation goes down. One pound is going to be getting us $1.40. This has got an influence over firms who export their goods abroad and how much a country can import from abroad. So what you want to think about is spiced, strong pound, imports cheaper, exports dearer. When the pound is strong, say for example, that one pound is going to get us $1.60, um, it costs us, as people in Britain, less money relatively to bring foreign goods in. But our exports become dearer because people abroad are getting less value for their money when they exchange it. And the last thing we need to think about is taxation and government spending. Government charging people, um, for example, income tax and VAT. So I go to work, I pay my income tax. Uh, whenever I go to a shop, I buy something, I pay value added tax on it, VAT. And they will also charge firms by corporation tax a percentage of profits to pay for the public sector, the NHS, education roads etc so a lot of information there and i said that's about as much as you need to know think about those key terms and you need to think about the implications of these on a firm business so here's what i want you to do in your own time this is your first task okay you've got your economic variables there trade cycle boom recession slump recovery interest rates low well went down to 0.25 percent interest rates went up to one percent inflation goes up to 
0.5%. UK pound gains in value relative to all other currencies. So an appreciation, a strengthening of, of the UK um, currency and government increased value added tax, the tax that we pay um, when we buy products and corporation tax. And then what I want you to do is just jot me down some notes, just use a bit of paper and a pen on this. We will go through it. Um, next week when we're live, think about the impact on Amazon based in the UK, headquartered in London, for each of those things. Think about the impact on consumers in the UK. So let's just have, let's just pick one at random, all right? So let's say, imagine the rates of interest are 0.5%, and then the uh, Monetary Policy Committee, uh, the Bank of England, put the rates down to 0.25%. What will be the impact on Amazon? Well, I think they could be um, taking out loads of cheap loans. Maybe they want to expand. Maybe they want to increase the size of their warehouses, bring in new staff. They can do that by taking out loans. What are the impacts on consumers in the UK? Well, there's more availability of cheap credit. If I want to buy something mahusive, so I just said mahusive, massive, um, from Amazon, I need a few thousand pounds. I might borrow it from the bank. Okay? So there we go. All right, I think that's it for the PowerPoint. It is indeed. Uh, so there is your first task. And then what I want you to do for me, I'm going to upload this worksheet as an assessed piece of work. I want you to do this worksheet for me. Simple as that. So these A to Z worksheets are pretty good. Fill in the missing um, gaps in the first. For the next one, you've got external factor, then two effects. So the way that you want to see this is two point one. It says there, choose one from A to F and one from U to Z. So for 2.1, the external factor, fading demand for luxury products, then think about an effect on business from that second column, and then think about another effect on business from the third column. So you're going to write down 2.1 and then you're going to have two effects. And the last question is pretty self-explanatory. In terms of deadlines, people, I'm going to deadline this for this afternoon. You've got three hours. Um, so this should be done and submitted back in by 4.30. I'll leave this one there. I'm going to move on to a second PowerPoint looking at legislation. Hope you've enjoyed the first one.